In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural white plaster material. And if you'd like to purchase the procedural material and help support the channel, you can purchase it with the links in the description. So the material is gonna come join into this custom node group. And so I'll just review the material and show you the different settings. Now this material is pretty subtle. And so when I change these values, it's a little bit hard to see what the material is looking like just cause it's a little bit subtle. So what I'm gonna do is turn up the bump strength. I'll turn that up maybe to like a five and the larger bump strength up to a five. So first we have this overall scale so you can change this depending on the size of your object and then we also have the texture scale so there's basically two different levels of textures so there's kind of this one here which is kind of bumpy and it's only in a few spots and then there's also this one here which is more subtle so this texture scale is changing that first one then there's also the texture detail and then there's also the texture roughness then there is the base color so I kind of have it a mid gray color because when it's really white it looks a little bit blown out but you can of course just change this depending on what works well for your scene or you could make it like a painted plaster if you want to add it to like a wall in a room or on a ceiling then we also have the roughness of the material so you can make it more rough or more shiny and then we have the larger texture scale settings so we have this one here the larger texture scale which is just going to change the texture then we have the larger texture mass scale so you can see there's just some little chunks here and there where there's that larger texture so if I change this it's going to change kind of the location of where that is so you can have some bigger areas or some smaller areas and then we have the detail level of the texture and also the roughness. And then we have the two bump strengths. So bump strength one, which is kind of all, all over the surface. And then bump strength two, which is just on those patchy areas. So if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description. And you can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So before we start, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the Blender file the same way that I have. So I went to the Add menu and I went to Mesh and I added an Icosphere. And then right behind me on the Add Icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions to 6 so it is smooth and round. And then I'll use the Object Context menu and shade it smooth. And then to make it better for modeling to the real life scale in Blender, I like to scale the spheres down to a 0.2, so hit S, 0.2, and then enter, just so it's a better scale, and I'll hit Control A and apply the object scale. So then I also just added a camera, and I just pointed the camera right at the object. And if you select the camera and then click right over here to go to the camera data properties, I turn the focal length up to 80, just so it kind of zooms the camera in a bit. And also here on the output properties, I set it to 1920 by 1920, so it is a square image. So for the lighting, I added two different area lights. So I added this area light right here. And so if you go to the object data properties, I turn the power to 20 and I set the shape to disc. And so this is shooting down on the object to give it some bright lighting. And then I also have this one here. So this one is a bit larger and the power is set to five. So if I go into the camera view, that's gonna give a subtle rim light to the back just to kind of lighten up that area. And then also here on the world properties, I added in the Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. So link is in the video description if you want to download it. So I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color. You can choose environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI here in the world properties. And then I also set the strength to 0.8 so it just wasn't quite as bright. And then also if you go over here to the render properties and let's just scroll down here, I'm going to go to the film tab and I'm going to check mark the transparent button just so that it's transparent in the background so you can't see the HDRI. And then also here on the view transform, I'm using the view transform of filmic and I set the look to very high contrast. So I'm in the shading workspace and I'm gonna go into the rendered viewport mode so I can see the material. And so let's just select the object and let's go to the shader editor and I'll click on new to add a new material. And I'm just gonna rename this to white plaster. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in the video. So to enable it, you can click on edit, go to the preferences, and then here on the add-ons tab, just go to the search and you can search for node and just enable the node wrangler add-on. So let's start by going to the add menu and we're going to search for a Voronoi texture. And let's just drop the Voronoi right here. And then because we enabled the node wrangler, I'll hit control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I'm going to plug the object up to the vector. So it's using the object coordinates. And then let's hold down the control and shift key and select the Voronoi to preview it on the object. 
So let's change some of the Voronoi settings. So from the F1 here, I'm gonna change it to smooth F1 instead. So if I drag up the scale now, you can see it's gonna be smooth, whereas before it kind of has those kind of sharp white lines. So if I change it to smooth F1, it's gonna be smooth around those circle bits. So let's turn the scale up really big to like a 200. And then I'm gonna turn the detail up a little bit to a three. So now you can see there's quite a bit more detail. And then I'll turn this roughness up to a 0.7. And then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So now what I wanna do is put the Voronoi into the bump to give it some surface bump. So to do this, we need to search for a bump node and drop this right here. And the distance of the Voronoi, that needs to go into the height value so it converts it to bump data. So now I can drag the strength around to make it more and less strong. Let's Let's just start by plugging the normal into the normal here of the principal shader and I'll control shift select the principal shader to preview it. Now what I could do is drag the strength way down to make it more subtle and now I can just kind of zoom in there and see how that's looking. However, if I look closely, it kind of looks a little bit sharp in some areas and so what I'm gonna do instead is turn up the strength and I'm gonna turn down the distance instead. So you can see if I turn the distance to a really small value, you can see it's gonna be much more subtle so it doesn't look quite as strong but you can see it looks a lot more soft whereas before it was a lot sharper. So you you can see that texture just looks quite a bit more soft. Now, as I'm dragging this distance value around, it's really hard to get it correct because it is so sensitive. So I wanna make this distance value less sensitive. So I'm gonna search for a math node and we'll drop it down here. And from add, I'm gonna change it instead to multiply. And let's plug the value into the distance. So now this multiply is controlling that value. Now on the top value here, I'm gonna type in point 0, 0, 0, 0002. And then on the value here, the bottom one, I'll just turn that to one. So now you can see that it's very subtle because the value here is 0. 0.0002. So we're multiplying it by like an extremely small value, but then this value here is still at one. So I can now just hold down the shift key and then just drag this value here. And so this makes it a lot easier to control how strong the material is. So that's gonna be the first layer of textures. So I'm gonna select the texture coordinate and mapping and drag them up here. And we're gonna be creating some more textures textures right up here for the larger bits. So what I'm gonna do for this is search for another Voronoi texture. Let's add the Voronoi and then plug the vector into the vector. And let's just preview the Voronoi and I can change the settings. So I'm gonna change this one to smooth F1 as well. And this one, I'll turn the scale to 120. And then I'll turn the detail to two, so it's more detailed. And then this roughness, I'll turn all the way up to one, so it's more detailed. And then let's also click on this normalize button. So I'm gonna check the normalize so it looks a bit darker. So now I wanna add a color ramp to make it more contrasted. So I'm gonna search for a color ramp and let's drop it here after the Voronoi. And then I can just drag the white tab over just like that, so it's a little bit more contrasted. So this is gonna be the texture for those larger chunky areas where it's a bit more bumpy, but I don't want it to be all over the place, all over the material, I just want it to be in a few spots here and there. So I'm gonna create another texture up here and we're gonna use that as a mask just to make it in some areas. So to do this, we can search for a noise texture, drop this above the Voronoi, and we can plug the mapping vector into the vector, and let's just preview the noise texture. So I can change the settings, so I'll turn the scale to 14, and I'm gonna turn the detail to eight, and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. And then let's make it more contrasted by adding a color ramp right after it. And we'll put that after the noise. And now I can drag the black tab and white tab really close to each other. And I'll drag that to about there and the white tab to about there. So now you can see there's just a few areas where it's black. So I wanna mix this together. So if I hold down the shift key and select both of these color ramps, I can hit control zero. So control zero is going to add this mix color here. So let's open it up and drag it over. And I wanna take the top one and put that into the factor because that's gonna act as a mask. And then here on the bottom color ramp, that is gonna go into color A. So now color B can just be fully white. So I'll just make it fully white. So now you can see if I just preview the color ramp where it is darker, that is where that texture of the Voronoi is gonna show up. So it's just in a few spots here and there. So now what I wanna do is add this into the bump. So we'll box select the principal shader and drag it up here. And I'm gonna select both of these bumps here. So the bump and the multiply, and I'll hit shift to duplicate it and drop it here. So because this first one is already converted to bump data or normal data, that can go into the normal. And then this bump normal can go into the normal here. So we can now just drag these down. So now we have this extra height value that we can drag data into. So let's put the mixed result here into the height and I can control shift select the principled shader. Now this one I want to be quite a bit stronger, so I'm gonna turn this multiply value here, the top one, to just a 0 .001, so it'll be a bit stronger. But then this value can still be turned to one, and so now if I drag this, you can see it's going to 
make it stronger or less strong, but it's more subtle. Now, if I look in here or zoom up closely, you can see it looks like it's pushing back into the mesh instead of coming out. So I'm gonna click on the invert button, and that way now you can see there's all these little kind of circles here, which look like little bits of plaster, which is popping out of the mesh. And then I'll turn the value back to one. So now we have two different levels there, so we have two different levels of bump. And then the roughness here, you can change the roughness if you want. If you want to be like more shiny, I'm gonna keep the roughness at 0.5, so it's just kind of a mid-level of roughness, but you can change that with the custom node group. Now for the color here, I want to make this kind of like a mid-gray color, so it's just not quite as bright, but of course you can change this if you want to, depending on how bright the scene is and what you want the color to look like. And the hex value that I'm going to be using for this color is going to be 818181, so you can punch that in there if you want to use the same base color I'm using. So that's it for the procedural material, so I'll now show you how to join it together into a node group. So we're going to click and drag to box select all the nodes, accept the material output, and you can hit Control g to join it together into a node group. Let's hit the tab key to go outside the node group and I'll drag the node group over here. We can also make it bigger and then I can copy the material name and I can paste it here into the node group so it's called white plaster. So let's hit tab to go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel and if you go to the group tab you can see there's the group sockets. So let's double click on this to rename it and I'll just rename that to shader because I like that better. So now right over here on the group input we can plug up all the custom values. So let's plug the mapping scale into the extra socket because the mapping is plugged up to all the textures so that I'll change the size of the entire material. Now if we click on the scale value right here you can see that it's going to be three values but I just want it to be one value so we'll turn the vector to float and then I'll need to turn the default value to one and then if we hit tab to go out of the node group we need to turn the scale back to one. So I'll change the size of the entire material. So let's go back into the node group. So let's now drag the node group right down here to the Voronoi, and I want to put the scale and the detail and the roughness into these three sockets. And then we can rename them. So I'm going to rename this to texture scale, texture detail, and then also texture roughness. I now want to add the base color, so I'll drag the group input right over here by the principal shader, and I can put the base color into the extra socket, and then also let's put the roughness into the extra socket as well. Then I want to control the size of the larger texture, so I'll drag the group input back here, and let's take this bottom Vorno here, not the one way down here, but this one here, and we'll put the scale into the extra socket. And this one I'll rename larger texture scale. Then I want to control the mask, so this noise texture is the mask so we'll put the scale into the extra socket here and this one I'm going to rename to larger texture scale mask because that one is just going to control the mass there so let's go back into the node group and then I also want to control the detail and the roughness of this Voronoi, so I'll put the detail into the extra socket and the roughness into the extra socket. And then these two values that I just added, I'll call this one larger texture detail and larger texture roughness. And then I just want to control the bump strengths, so I'm just going to drag the group input right down here. And this first one here, that is controlling the bump for the overall material. We're not going to use the distance or anything or the strength. We're not going to use this strength here. I'm going to use the multiply value, and I'll put this into the extra socket. And then this one, I'll click on it to rename it, and I'll just rename it to bump strength. And then the last one here is this multiply value, so we'll put this value into the extra socket. And this one, I'm just going to call this larger bump strength. So I'll hit N to close the side panel. I can drag the group input right back up here, and I'll hit Tab to go outside the node group. So now we can just review the final material. So what I'll first do is just turn these bump strengths up to maybe like a six, so they're a bit stronger, so I can kind of see the material better. So we have the scale to change the size of the entire material. Then we also just have the texture scale, which is the smaller detail and then we have the texture detail and the texture roughness. We also have the base color, so you could make this lighter or darker. You could also make it like a painted plaster wall if you wanted to. And then we also have the roughness to make it a bit more shiny. And if it's a painted plaster, maybe I'd turn the roughness down just so it has a little bit more shine. And then we have the larger texture settings, so the larger texture scale the larger texture mask scale. So you can have like lots of little areas or just a few bigger areas. Then the larger texture detail, the larger texture roughness, and then of course the two bump strengths. So the first one is just the overall bump over the entire material. And then the second one is just those extra bumpy areas, but I'm gonna keep them pretty subtle at a one so that it's a little bit more subtle and kind of smooth. So that's how you create this procedural white plaster material. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And you can also purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, links are in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, you can check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack.
which comes with all of my procedural materials, pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube, so all the links are in the description. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.